So this video is going to look at the question, what constitutes an ideal phase margin? So previous videos have largely assumed that if you had a phase margin of around 60 degrees, you're likely to get good performance. So what we want to do now is explore the extent to which 60 degrees is actually a generic value. I, can I apply that to all systems or can I apply it to only some systems? And where does this 60 degrees come from? Now some background we need. First of all, we know that up to some limit, a larger phase margin tends to imply that the closed loop poles are faster and or less oscillatory because the Nyquist diagram is further from the minus one point. Similarly, if you are too far from the minus one point, this could imply that the control law is too cautious, i.e. your gain is too small, and hence the feedback loop would be excessively detuned. And therefore there's a middle ground. We don't want the phase margin to be too small, and we don't want the phase margin to be too large. And therefore we need to know what is an ideal phase margin? Where is this middle ground? Now in practice, you're going to need to use trial and error because every system is different, okay? But what this video will do is give some analysis that's applicable to second order systems as a start point because that helps us. Once we've got a start point, um, it's a lot easier to do fine tuning around there. Some reminders then are some key things that we've covered in other videos. What's the link between the overshoot for a step response and the damping ratio? Okay, so we want the link between the overshoot and the damping ratio. In this graph, tells you. Now, typically, you're going to be looking at an overshoot of around 10% or less, which I've marked here. And what does that tell you? What it tells you is the damping ratio has to be bigger than 0.6, because if the damping ratio is smaller than 0.6, your overshoot is going to be bigger than 10%. And you'll also notice that around 0.6 you get 10%, around 0.7 you get 5%, and so on. Now, if you want to look at this analysis in more detail, please look at video 9 in the second order responses series. So what's an acceptable damping? We can see an overshoot of about 10% gives a damping of about 0.6. An overshoot of 5% gives a damping of about 0.7. So the target closed loop damping is probably 0.6 to 0.7, because if you made the damping bigger, although the overshoot would be smaller, you may now be moving on to being too cautious. Right. What we want to do next then is look at the links between closed loop damping and phase margin. All right, because ultimately we're saying we're going to use the phase margin for our design. So we want to know what phase margin corresponds to a damping ratio in the order of 0.6 to 0.7, which will then give us an acceptable overshoot. And we're going to look at a simple standard second order system, which includes an integrator. We want an integrator because that ensures zero steady state offset. So here's our classic or simple second order system, g equals omega n squared over s, s plus 2 zeta omega n. Now we've deliberately written it in this form because it means when we close the loop, you see you get your standard second order form. gc equals omega n squared over s squared plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n squared. Now, in order to find the phase margin, we need to find the gain crossover frequency. And that's solved by writing the modulus of g equals 1, g being given up here, obviously. Now, if I solve that, I end up with this nice little formula here. A little bit messy, but explicit. Having done that, I can now solve this in order to find the gain crossover frequency omega. Now, I'm not going to go through all the algebra because that's a bit tedious and no one's going to ask you to repeat this in practice. But here's the formula. You'll see the gain crossover frequency is given by this box at the bottom, which is some function of omega n and zeta. Now, what do we need to do in order to find the phase margin? Well, first of all, we do need to use the gain crossover frequency, and then we need to find the argument of g at this frequency. So here it is. It's minus 90 minus 10 to the minus 1 of omega over 2 zeta omega n. Now the phase margin is defined as 180 
plus the argument of g at the gain crossover frequency. And so you get this 90 minus 10 to the minus 1 omega over 2 zeta omega n. And then I plug in the omega I got from the previous page for the gain crossover frequency. And this is my phase margin. Now again, no one's going to ask you to repeat the steps of this algebra. We're showing them quickly so you know where they've come from. What I'm going to do next is sketch this. And you'll see that we have a nice link between the phase margin and the damping ratio. Now the next question to remember is what damping ratio did you want? And you remember we said a damping ratio of about 0 0.6 corresponds to a 10% overshoot, whereas a damping ratio of about 0 0.7 corresponds to a 5% overshoot. So what you're saying is to get a balance between not being too oscillatory but also not being too cautious, then what you're going to expect is that the damping ratio is in this region here, which means the phase margin is in this region here. And you'll notice what you get, you get something like 58 degrees up to about 70 degrees. And the reason people use 60 is because they will often view 10% overshoot as just about acceptable. So, what have we got here? A phase margin of 60 to 65 degrees will give an overshoot of 5 to 10% for this classic second order system. And this is where your target phase margin of about 60 degrees has come from, this analysis. So what we want to do now is run through a number of examples to discern the extent to which this guideline can be applied to lots of different systems. So you'll see these systems, they're all stable, they've all got left half plane factors, but they vary in order and whether they have integrators or not. So example one, you'll see it down here, g equals 0.1 of s, s plus 0.2. And what we've done is plotted the closed loop step responses for different phase margins. OK, so we essentially change the gain to change the phase margin. And you see, with an 80 degree phase margin, you are slow. So 80 degrees is too much. With a 70 degree phase margin, you are also relatively slow. So for this case, 70 degrees is probably not good enough. Now with 60 degrees, you see you get this plot here, OK, which gives you an overshoot of about 10%. So what you can see here is that between 60 and 70 degrees is about right because if you go down to a 50 degree phase margin you've got this plot here and now you're seeing you're getting close to a 20% overshoot which might be considered a little bit too large. So in this case somewhere along the lines of 60 to 70 degrees is about right. What about this example which you see is now third order and you notice we get a relatively similar message. If I go for a phase margin of 70 degrees I get this plot here which has a very small overshoot and nice smooth behavior so 70 degrees looks not bad. If I go for 60 degrees I get this plot here which gives me the order of a 10 percent overshoot. If I go down to 50 degrees then I get this plot here where the overshoot is now of the order of 20%. So you're probably going to argue that in this case 60 to 70 degrees is about right in order to get the sort of overshoot which is acceptable without being too cautious. Next example, now I've taken it up to fourth order but you will see again you get a very similar result. With a 70 degree phase margin I've got this response here which has a minimal overshoot and you might consider that to be slightly cautious. With a 60 degree phase margin I get this one here which is about 10% overshoot whereas if I go down to 50 degrees I get this one here which is around 20%. So again you're going to say 60 to 70 degrees seems to be about right. <coughs> What about this one here? So you'll see this is third order, but we've now introduced a zero. And things are beginning to look slightly different, but not a lot different. For a start, there's some very slow 
settling over here, but that seems to affect most of them. But let's start with our 70 degree phase margin. In this case, 70 degrees is this one, and it gets it initial rise time is quite good, but it's pretty slow to settle thereafter. If I go to 60 degrees, it gets a bit closer. The overshoot's not too bad. And it's certainly better than 70 degrees, but you might argue that the settling time's a bit on the slow side. If I now go to 50 degrees, I've got this one here, and you'll see the overshoot's now up to about 10%. But in terms of getting close to the target, it's a little bit better. So in this case, you're probably going to argue that 50 to 60 degrees is more likely to be a favourable phase margin as opposed to 60 to 70. But you're not really that far away. You still see that 60 is borderline. It's putting you in the right ballpark. Now, what we've done with this one is we've said, I'm no longer going to have an integrator. Do I get the same insights? if I remove the integrator, and here you see you don't. Apart from the fact, of course, you get an offset because there's no integrator, but let's ignore the offset for now and just look at the sort of behavior that we've got. And you'll see, even with an 80 degree phase margin, which is this black line here, you've got a sizable overshoot. There's the overshoot for the 80 degree phase margin. If I go for a 70 degree phase margin, which is this one here, okay, you've still got a sizable overshoot. Okay, certainly more than 10%, maybe not quite as big as 20%, 20 but it's getting not far off. If I go down to a 60 degree phase margin here, which is this magenta type one, okay, now you see the overshoot really is quite large. So what do you notice? Even with what seem to be very good phase margins, you've got large overshoots and oscillation. And so now it's a little bit more difficult to talk about what's a good phase margin. And of course, we might argue, well, you need some extra compensation here. A simple scalar compensator is simply not doing the job for you. But the issue, the, the key point to notice is that phase margin on its own isn't enough in this case to tell you you've got good performance. Here's another example with no integrator and this one you'll see has got a f it's a fourth order system and you'll see the same sort of insights. If I take an 80 degree phase margin which you'd have thought that sounds quite good I've got this black plot and look how oscillatory it is and look how much overshoot you've got. That really is quite substantial. That's with an 80 degree phase margin. If I go down to something like a 60 degree phase margin, this magenta one, you see the overshoot is even more. Okay? It's a very big overshoot indeed. So what's the message? That phase margin on its own may not be a good indicator when you don't have an integrator. Okay? There are other things you're going to need to consider. All right, what about systems with right half plane factors? You see the first one, right half plane zero, the second one, a right half plane pole. Well, here's the example with the right half plane zero. And you look at that behavior and you say, whoa, just a minute, this is really, really poor. Okay, very oscillatory, very slow to settle. But the other thing you'll notice is I have plotted phase margins from 20 degrees to 80 degrees. How much difference can you see in all of these plots. You can see they're all very similar. Changing the phase margin doesn't seem to be having a significant impact on the behavior that results. And that shouldn't say good, it should say poor performance. And instead of only, that should say even with a very large phase margin. So for this example, phase margin of 60 degrees is not particularly informative at all. But the warning factor not to look for 60 degrees is this right half plane factor. Different rules may apply and it can be difficult to generalize. Here's the example with a right half plane pole. And again, what do you notice? How big are these overshoots? Okay, very big overshoots indeed. Okay, and so albeit you've got the smallest overshoot, 
with the largest phase margin, the overshoot is still greater than 50%. Okay, so you've got large overshoots even with large phase margins. So again, that's a warning for you that when you've got right half plane factors, different rules may apply and it can be difficult to generalize because it depends what else is within the dynamics. So in summary, the video is considered what constitutes a good phase margin. For simple systems with left half plane factors and critically here and including an integrator, 60 degrees seems to be a good indicator of small overshoot by which we mean around 10% and we've done a number of examples to show this seems to hold in practice. I'm sure you can find a counter example if you want but for many simple examples it seems to work quite well. However if there was no integrator then the desired value of the phase margin was less clear cut even if you have just left half plane factors and you may need to look at other insights before you can get good performance. And also if you had right half plane factors it was less clear cut what constitutes a good phase margin. And so the key thing is students should not be misled into expecting something like 60 degrees in those cases.